Uh, right. After two miserable comics, here is a good one. Dairy Devil, issue 165. By Slurms McKenzie and Ank Miller. Dairy Devil vs. Spider-Man's Big Nemesis. Fat Gerbil Man himself. Dan Slott. This cover features Ank Miller's classic technique of depicting movement with the ghost images of Dairy Devil. I can't remember what that is officially called. But I doubt anyone is watching this video to learn the name of an artistic method. Our story is titled Arms of the Octopus, which is what a lot of stories with this bad guy are called. This is a great comic, though. A very great issue. Again, I will praise Slurms McKenzie as a truly underrated writer. But I am not being disingenuous enough to credit him with everything amazing in this issue. There's still a lot of Ank Miller in here. The two of them work together really well. Slurms McKenzie seems to temper Ank Miller into playing in a ball pit instead of Ank Miller wanting to go beyond the ball pit. Loads of Ank Miller though, the panel layouts, even the pacing I would attribute to Ank Miller. We have Dairy Devil, he goes to Josie's bar to beat some info out of some odds about a recent theft of Adam Zantium. This little corner with Josie's bar and Turk. These were very Ank Miller. He had a little world built in Dairy Devil. And it was done with less effort than you would expect. Although, maybe... Maybe this was Slurms McKenzie, and Ank Miller kept the ball rolling. A lot of ball metaphors in this video. I'll say that because in Captain America, Slurms McKenzie had this funny running joke where whenever Captain America would check in at Avengers House, Thor and Hercules Man will be having an arm wrestling match in the background. The joke being, or the implication, that it is the same arm wrestling match. They are so evenly matched, the contest never ends. Well, it does end, but we don't get a victor. They get interrupted when Captain America barges in and says that he needs their help. Love that running gag, though. It is fun and funny. And this is fun and funny. And I can see similarities between that and Josie constantly complaining about her bar being wrecked by Dairy Devil or Turk always being caught and forced into squealing. So Dairy Devil, he gets a lead on the theft which brings him to the company that is being ran by his ex-lover. 
We have some angsty drama stemming from that and Dairy Devil's involvement in her personal life which led to the death of her father. And then we have some more character drama with the relationship between Dairy Devil and Scarlett Johansson. There is some payoff to this at the end of the issue. Dairy Devil, he finds out where the stolen Adam Zantium was taken. And here he fights some low-level henchmen. And I always like to point this out. Sloan's McKenzie and Hank Miller, they are replying to the letters. Although I think this is an editor, the editor relaying a lot of this. And also, Marky Mark G was assistant editor on Hank Miller Dairy Devil. Didn't know that. Dairy Devil versus Dan Slot. The Man Without Fear versus The Man Without Charm. I really, really love the visuals here. Dan Slot using his spaghetti arms to hold Dairy Devil down into a river to drown them. Very good and practical use of Dan Slot. I will explain them um, because I don't like them. Um, Dan Slot, the fat gerbil man, was introduced in Amazing Spider-Man 3, created by Stanley Lee and Steve Dittman. For the first few years, he was Spider-Man's arch-enemy. His claim to fame was beating up a kid and bragging about it. He certainly is Spider-Man's arch-enemy in those comics. But nowadays, the reason a lot of people think of Fat Gerbil Man as Spider-Man's arch-enemy is because Spider-Man is always written by the people that don't read any Spider-Man outside of Stanley Lee. You can actually observe that after Stanley Lee stopped writing Spider-Man, the character had a sharp drop-off in both use and quality. That's not to say that there weren't decent stories with him after that. It was that, more often than not, they were elsewhere like in an issue of Fantastic Force. Or as we are seeing now, an issue of Dairy Devil. It's more of that same bullshit I always complain about where the people writing comics are people who don't really like comics or they stopped liking comics. When the 90s came, the fake fanboys decided to reassert the notion that Dan Slott was Spider-Man's archenemy, because that is all they remember. We get horse shit, like him beating the Hulk in a fight. That is the level of idiot we are dealing with when it comes to these people doesn't just beat him in a fight, fucking pummels him into utter defeat in two pages. And then, decades later, we get to another writer making the character his self-insert. He related to the character. He relates to the fat gerbil man. And he believes that fat gerbil man is the hero, and Spider-Man is the villain. 
He thinks Fat Gerbil Man would and should be a better Spider-Man. A superior Spider-Man. He believes this because he sees himself in the character. And he thinks he is a genius too and he is the hero and everyone else is the villain. This really happened and has been canon for 10 years. I don't like Dan Slott, the writer or the character. So there is that excellent advertisement for Ron Spaceman. I think the point I want to make with this video is that I read this with all the related run 12 years ago or something like that. I didn't remember a single thing about this issue besides the bad guy. I only remembered the novelty of Dairy Devil fighting a Spider-Man bad guy. Reading it by itself this time though, I noticed and appreciated things I wouldn't have the first time. If you have read all the Hank Miller issues before this, little things like the staging with that drowning dairy devil bit, or the action itself. By this point you're about eight issues into Hank Miller's run as artist on Dairy Devil and you won't be recognising all that he is bringing to the title as much because you've seen it in the eight issues before. It doesn't feel as special eight issues in. So what I am going to say is Go find a comic like this, a comic that you have not read before or you read once years ago as part of a collection. Go find a single issue that you like the cover of or that has an idea that you're into and read it by itself. Don't worry about backstory or context or the need to read everything else just read one single issue and you will appreciate so much of the little things that you overlook when you read through a dozen issues in an epic collection or an omnibus. For starters, nobody is going to try and sell your fruit pies in an omnibus. Dan Slott, he is defeated by electricity and we have the sudden reappearance of Scarlett Johansson which also announces that she is leaving the title and Dairy Devil's side. They are breaking up. Very abrupt. I don't really like that. It feels a bit tacked on. Like an afterthought. I will recommend this issue... I don't think it is Sloane's Mackenzie's best Dairy Devil, but it is very good. I want to try and track down more of Sloane's Mackenzie's work with fill-ins and stuff like that. I know he did a couple of Ghost Drivers. I don't think there has been a Sloane's Mackenzie comic that I haven't enjoyed that Iron Man fill in he did. Can read that. That was so far and above the standard of a typical fill in. 
I think I will review some more of his Captain America. And I'll do that other Dairy Devil issue I have. The one with the Hulk. That is my favourite of his Dairy Devil stories. I'm giving this a very seven thumbs up.